Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I'll be taking you through some DDR5 sub-timing uh, adjustments that you can do on Asus motherboards to improve your memory performance without affecting the stability, at least ideally without affecting the stability, because while these timings have worked great for me across many different motherboards, three different CPUs, and three different memory kits, uh, I don't know with absolute certainty that they will work for you. Um, and so you should definitely run a memory stress test after, you know, setting these sub timings. But uh, in my experience, it's very unlikely that that memory stress test will fail on you if you just copy the timings that I'm about to show you. Uh, however, you will need SK Hynix based uh, memory. So single rank uh, 16 gigabit MDI SK Hynix uh, memory chips. The memory kit that I'm using here today is one of these Corsair Vengeance 2x16 6200 CL36 kits. Um, and mine is uh, using SK Hynix 16 gigabit MDI. I don't know if these are guaranteed to be SK Hynix 16 gigabit MDI. I think it's pretty unlikely that you would get a, like that you would get Samsung memory in a 6200 rated kit. Um, and it's absolutely impossible that you would get Micron DDR5 in a 6200 rated kit. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% certain that these are guaranteed to be SK Hynix 16 gigabit MDI. It's just that they probably are. Um, and there are other SK Hynix based memory kits out there. This isn't the only one, but this is the one that I am using. Um, in fact, these memory timings should work even if you get like OEM SK Hynix uh, DDR5 sticks, like green PCB from like... I think Dell at one point in time was selling those. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, let's go into the BIOS. And uh, initially, we're going to do some baseline performance checks with just the XMP profile. And so we're just going to turn on the XMP. Because the idea behind this is that you add these timings to your XMP profile. We're, we're not going to, like, manually... This isn't a full manual overclock. This is just, like, you have an SK Hynix based memory kit, you turn on the XMP and then you also throw these timings on top of the XMP and you get a bit more performance. Or maybe a lot more performance depending on how uh, sensitive whatever workload you're running is to certain uh, memory operations. Um, because in some ways, uh, the time, like in some aspects, the timing adjustments I'm about to make make a bigger difference than in other ways. So yeah. Anyway, so the board's now going through just... Uh, actually, at this point, it's already finished training, so... Now we're just going to get into Windows. And we're going to run some IDA. Because while it's not exactly my favorite... Like, while it's not a memory benchmark I particularly like, it is popular, lots of people use it, and so there's plenty of comparison data for it. Um... So anyway, let's pull up IDA. And we're just going to go to cache and memory benchmarks and we're just going to run the memory test. And if you double click the memory label, it'll actually just run the memory tests without running everything else. So we get 98 gigabytes, well, actually like 99 gigabytes per second on, on reads. Um, I'm actually just going to make that bigger so that it's easier to see. So yeah, we're getting like 98 gigabytes per second reads, uh, 87 gigabyte per second writes. We should be getting something close to 90 gigabytes per second for copy. Copy also takes forever for some reason. Yeah, so we get 80... 89, yeah. <laughs> you round that up, that's 89. And for latency, we should be seeing something north of 60 nanoseconds. Not like 70 or something. They're, yeah, so we get 64. That's actually pretty bad for the XMP. Um, I've seen it get as low as like 62 nanoseconds sometimes. So we'll, we'll just rerun that because the IDA latency test is rather inconsistent. And it can easily go up, up and down by like 2 nanoseconds if you just keep rerunning it. Um, so we get a 63. I'm going to scale the window back. There we go. Uh, 
and we get another 64. Okay, I guess right now we're just not going to get a 62. So anyway, that's that's our IDA performance, right? We got um, 98 gigabytes per second reads, 87 gigabytes per second writes, uh, nine like 89 gigabytes per second copy, and a 63 nanosecond uh, latency at best. Um, so the other test we're going to run is 3D Mark Time Spy. Just the CPU test, um, because the CPU test in 3D Mark Time Spy, it's not a synthetic memory benchmark. It is just a CPU workload that happens to use the memory a lot. And it is reasonably sensitive, and it'll pick up on timing issues that IDA will not detect. Like, I have an entire video dedicated to, like, a specific set of, like, timings that if you change them, IDA won't really notice a difference. But if you run any actual, like, memory-intensive CPU workloads like the time spy CPU test or Linpack or Y Cruncher, uh, you'll notice that the performance is just absolutely terrible, while IDA will tell you that everything is just fine, which is another one of the reasons why I don't particularly like IDA as a memory benchmark, is because there are some pretty significant timing problems that you can get that IDA will just not pick up on. And I will link that video down in the description if you want to sort of see more about that. So for this baseline run, we should be seeing about 20,000 points. Um, well, something between like 19,500 and 20,000 points. Unfortunately, most memory intensive workloads tend to be a little bit inconsistent. Um, just because they, I guess they're more susceptible by being affected by other things running than some other workloads are. So we get 19,567 points. So that's on the low side of what, I, what, what I've seen the XMP do, but um, well, that'll just play into my favor when we change the timings and hopefully I get the like peak <laughs> with the timings spit out. So anyway, like, you know, 19,600 points, but I've seen it also produce 20,000 points. So yeah, that, that's in like the, the test variance for, for Time Spy. Anyway, so now we're going to go back into the BIOS. And we're just going to punch in some better timings, as well as make some voltage adjustments. Um, and we're just going to go over to the extreme tweaker, and we're going to punch in... Well, we're going to lower the system agent voltage. Like, there's no harm in 1.25 volt system agent, but it's also completely unnecessary at 6200 megabits per second. Like, if you're pushing very high memory speeds, then higher system agent voltage can help. But 6200 is not high memory speed for DDR5. Like, yeah. Like, actually, 6200 should work it even with, like, one volt of system agent voltage, but, yeah. Anyway, uh, CPU input voltage up to 1.9 volts. Uh, and then we're going to bump our memory voltage to 1.4. Our other memory voltage to 1.4 and our transmitter VDDQ voltage also to 1.4. Um, and this is the part of the video that's like specific to Asus motherboards because the way the voltages behave across different motherboard vendors with DDR5 is v like all over the place. Settings that work on Gigabyte really don't work on like Asus boards. Uh, MSI boards also like to have somewhat different tuning from everybody else in terms of voltages. So... Yeah, trying, like, copying, like, Asus voltages over to Gigabyte is, a gen yeah, basically a bad idea. Uh, it can work, but it probably won't, and if, if I was doing this with a Gigabyte board and you tried to copy whatever voltages I use on a Gigabyte board on an Asus board, it'll definitely not work. Um, anyway, so now for the timing adjustments. So we're just going to set our TRAS to 28. Uh, we're not going to touch any of the other primaries because those are mainly there to look pretty. Uh, we're going to set this to 6, that to 4... Uh, this to 33. No, I'm not going to explain what any of this does. <laughs> that would make the video entirely too long. 65,000. Oops. That's not 6. Ah. I mean 60. Where's 6? Ah, oh, there's 6. I'm not very good at typing, as you've probably noticed at this point. And for TRTP, we're going to set 12. Um, for active window, we're going to set 16. We're going to... Like, any timings that I'm leaving on auto... We're not setting them for reasons that I don't like that we don't need to get into. Let's just put it that way. So 12, 7, then 
yeah, we're going to skip those two, then 12 and 7 again. Um, like, basically, anything I'm not setting either has no performance impact or minimal performance impact. So, yeah. Anyway, we're going to set that to 48. And then we're going to keep going down. And TWR Pre, we're going to set to 44. TWR PDEN, we're going to set to 44. Um, and then down here, we're going to get TXP. We're going to set that to 4. And we're going to set P PPD to 0. And that's it. That's all of the timing adjustments. So, yeah, from bottom to top, we've got TPPD 0, TXP 4, TWR PDEN 44, TWR Pre 44. Um, keep going up and we get right to write, uh, right to read different group 48, right to read same group 60, right to write sa uh, different group 7, right to write different uh, same group 12. Man, okay, yeah, going the, doing these backwards is a bad idea for me. Uh, read to read different group 7, read to read same group 12. Um, and then we get TCKE4, uh, TFA16, or 4 activate win uh, four active window uh, 16. Uh, RTP uh, is at 12, so read to pre. Uh, 65,000 for RTREFI. Uh, oh, I forgot to set refresh cycle per bank. So refresh cycle per bank at 233. Refresh cycle at 333. Um, short, like, TRDS to 4, TRDL to 6. Um, yeah, so there. That's all of the timing adjustments. In fact, these timings would probably even work with auto voltage on this memory kit since it comes at 1.3 volts, but uh, yeah, 1.4 volts pretty much like... I I'd use 1.4 volts. Like there's no harm in running your SK Hynix DDR5 at 1.4 volts. Um, so yeah. Uh, and I've like... The the thing is, I don't think I've overclocked SK Hynix DDR5 with 1.3 volts, like, at all. So, uh, yeah. So while I would be really surprised if these timings didn't work at 1.3 volts, uh, I've never tested it. So, I'm no guarantees. If you want to try run these at lower voltages, that's on you. Um, if you're going to copy what I've done here, you punch in 1.4 volts. Anyway, uh, we're going to start by running IDA, of course. Actually, no, we're first going to check that all of our timings actually applied. So we're going to pull up Asus Mem Tweak It. Uh, I'll hopefully remember to put a link in the description for this. And we've got 36, 39, 39, 28, 2T, 6, 4, 3, 3, 3, 65,000, 5. This timing isn't real. Uh, 12, 16, 4, 34. So all good. And then we've got 12, 7, 20, 20, 12, 7, 60, 48. All good. Uh, then we have a bunch of timings that do not apply to single rank memory configuration, so we're just going to skip those. And we have TWR Pre at 44, good. TWR PDEN at 44, also good. Then in timings number two, we've got TXP4 at 4. I'm, I mean, TXP at 4. Um, and then in timings number three, we have our uh, refresh cycle per bank at 233, so that's all good. Um, actually, I don't know why I'm hitting apply on that. I didn't make any changes. Anyway, so now we're going to hit IDA. And the read speed should, like, the read speed will go up a bit, but it won't see the biggest improvement. The biggest improvement will be in the write test. So, yeah, read is now over 100 gigabytes per second. Previously, it was at, like, 99, 98 gigabytes per second. The write test was at uh, 87 gigabytes per second. Now it's at 98 almost. Um, right, so we've got, like, 11 gigabytes per second more write speed. The copy test is up at, should be at like 97, something like that. 96 maybe, 97. Yeah, so 97 gigabytes per second instead of 89 gigabytes per second. And latency should be down to around the like 56, 55 nanoseconds range. Maybe even 54 nanoseconds. Again, the, the IDA latency test is really inconsistent. Yeah, it's 54.9. If we run it again, it could go lower. It might go up. Like, that's, that's one of the more annoying parts of Ida's, uh, Ida's memory tests. Uh, wait, that went way up, didn't it? That's like 50... Yeah, that's it, up at 58 nanoseconds now. Stupid benchmark. 
I've also seen these timings spit out 53 nanoseconds sometimes, so the thing is the latency test is just incredibly inconsistent, and you do really need to run it a bunch of times before just, you know, accepting any result that it tries, that it makes. And I only just noticed that I had the... I was like, I wonder why it's so blurry. And it's because I had this scaling for the capture card wrong. Yeah, so now we're at 54.7. Um, so yeah, Ida's latency test never fails to be a random number generator. I mean, there's a range of numbers it can randomly generate, but <laughs> it's kind of all over the place. Um... Anyway, now we're going to run Time Spy, and we should be seeing 21,000-ish points. Um, I say should because, unfortunately, Time Spy is also kind of inconsistent. It can, you know, like, at XMP, I expect to see, like, 19,500 to 20,000. With these timing adjustments, I'm expecting to see, like, 20,500 to, like, well, actually, 20,600. I've not actually seen it hit like 20,500, but yeah, 20,600 all the way up to 21,100. Um, so again, there's like a 500 point spread. Okay, this looks like a pretty strong run. And the score we get is... 21,002. Actually, that is the highest score I've seen it produce for Time Spy. Yeah. Like, I've been getting like 21,120, 21,140, but 21, like, that's almost 21,200. So, that is really strong. I bet if I ran it again, it would actually be lower than this, because this is probably the fastest, like, yeah, this is basically the fastest run I've seen from these timings, but. That is the nature of, like, memory-intensive uh, benchmarks. It's just that they're very inconsistent. Like, a lot of them are very inconsistent. There are a very small number that aren't. Um, but anyway, so, yeah, that's that's it. It's just, like, you know, you punch in these timings, and in a test like Time Spy, you get, like, a 5% performance improvement. And some of the IDA, you know, latent, like, bandwidth tests, you see even more than a 10% performance improvement. Um... Also, TimeSpy isn't the world's most memory-sensitive benchmark ever, but it is reasonably sensitive, so... Um, yeah. Um, and these timings really should work on, like, any motherboard at speeds from, like, 6,000 all the way up to even 6,800. Like, there is quite a bit of uh, safety margin built into these, the way I set them. So, yeah, I, like, definitely run a stress test after you punch these in. But I would be very surprised if that stress test doesn't pass, because I've had zero issues with these across a very large, like, many motherboards. Uh, admittedly, not that many different memory kits, but, you know, multiple CPUs, and across a very wide speed range, right? Like, I've used these timings, I think, all the way from, like, 6,000 to 6,800, and actually, they'll even boot at, like, 7,000. It's just... And at 7,000, the issue is, I think, the CPU more so than the timings. But, um... Uh, yeah. So that is it for the video. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There is a link to that down in the description below. I also post uh, text versions of my videos to Patreon. So if you want like a faster, uh, more condensed version of the content that I cover in my videos, like the Patreon is where you can get that. Um, there's also the HOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, uh, hoodies, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. There's a link to that in the description as well. And then I also have a band camp if for some reason you hate your ears. Because uh, I make like metal inspired industrial background noise stuff. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.